Hello and welcome back to Picks and Portraits. Welcome back to the future, Picks and Portraits 2024. The theme this year is Remember Tomorrow and we are going to be kicking things off by doing just that. We've got a very spacey, in more than one way, double feature as we will be venturing into the far out world of Romanian retrofuturism. Before we get into that though, this and every video on this channel was made possible by our patrons over at patreon.com slash picksandportraits. We are not monetized, this channel is 100% viewer supported, in exchange we offer a ton of exclusive content, videos on the future, animation, nostalgia, and more. So if you like what we do and want to help make it happen, please consider supporting us, patreon.com slash picksandportraits. You can also buy a t-shirt, we have other merch as well. And of course, support us with your interest, like and share our videos, everything helps. Enough of these plugs, let's head back to the future. Now, I know it has been a minute since we've had an episode of Future Tunes, so to refresh, this is where we explore where animation and retrofuturism intersect. I generally like to start by giving some context, some history. While some futures aim to predict, as accurately as possible, the world of tomorrow, sometimes authors, artists, just let their imaginations run wild. Retrofuturism is basically science fiction. This is very true of this episode, so we are going to begin with a bit of a primer on Romanian sci-fi. The earliest example is 1873's The End of Romania by Al N. Dariu, an alternate history of Romania. For our purposes, two years later, we got Spirits of the Year 3000, written by future politician Take Ionescu. This presented a utopian society free of religion and war under a one-world government. Also, people apparently reach the maturity at age 15. Victor Aniston imagined space travel and atomic war in his novels in the year 4000 and a celestial tragedy from 1899 and 1914. 1914 was also the year A Romanian on the Moon was published, Henry Stahl. This is the foundation of Romanian science fiction. Just like here in the West in the early 20th century, sci-fi magazines were incredibly popular in the Socialist Republic of Romania. I apologize in advance for my pronunciation, but the most notable magazine was Collectia de Povestiri Testifico Fantastice, or CPSF. <laughs> CPSF was born out of a contest, a nationwide search for the best science fiction story in 1955. It was so successful, and so many entries were submitted, that one of the winners, Adrian Rogoz, was asked to edit a bi-monthly magazine. Again, hugely popular, and as such, CPSF was a great vehicle to promote government propaganda, uh, which was common. I wasn't able to read any of the stories, but the covers are great. Standard sci-fi stuff, uh, robots, space travel, uh, but some show then modern cars or outfits uh, and on the backdrop of futuristic settings. Aesthetically, these are awesome, and content-wise, the stories apparently followed these themes uh, as well. Issues had one longer story that was serialized, as well as a shorter self-contained one. I really wanted to find some Romanian sci-fi films, but that proved to be pretty difficult. I found information on a few, but actually being able to watch them was another story. I managed to track down a few films by Ion Popescu Gopo, who is a very important director and animator. Homo Sapiens from 1960 ends with a sequence in space and the next evolution of humanity. This was produced by cinemagraphic studio Bucharest, which later broke off into the state-owned animation studio Anima Film that produced the two films we're going to be looking at today, Delta Space Mission and The Sun of the Stars from 1984 and 1988. Both of these are from the directing team of Kayleen Kazan and Mersha Toya. From what I found, they only worked on these two films, along with Dan Chizovsky on The Sun of the Stars. Some pretty amazing work here. Uh, we are more concerned with the future than the plot, and as we get into these, it's pretty clear that this is pure science fiction. Both movies take place in the future, but the creators were not trying to accurately predict anything. These are fantasies, pure and simple, inspired by other popular sci-fi of the time, Star Wars 2001, Starting with Delta Space Mission, this takes place in 3084. Humans have colonized space and continue venturing into unexplored parts of the universe. It follows the crew of a spacecraft that reaches out to newly discovered planets. The ship is powered by an AI supercomputer. 
very similar to 2001. Aesthetically, this feature is more about looking cool than being practical. A lot of really great spacecraft, trains, uh, robots that can change their functions, surveying planets, defense. Conceptually, Delta Space Mission deals with AI developing emotions, specifically love uh, or lust. It falls for one of the crew members. The Sun of the Stars has a similar vibe. It takes place three millennia later in 6470. So much of the futurism we look at is aesthetic based or, you know, conceptually based. The advancement of technology or society, what the future is going to look like. But the Sun of the Stars deals in what is to come in terms of our consciousness. 2001 does this as well in the end, looking ahead to not what the world will look like in the future, but the next step of human consciousness when we transcend not only the language we speak, but how we communicate entirely. Plot-wise, a boy is separated from his parents, he is taken in by an alien species and is raised by them, he eventually sets out to find his parents. Like in Delta Space Mission, there is a supercomputer, Bob, that has intelligence, also the Chronomobile, a device that allows the user to travel uh, through projections through time, space travel, multiple unique ships and different planets full of distinct climates and alien species. Its depiction of technology, video screens, is in line with a lot of Soviet cartoons from around this time. Uh, flashing lights, oscilloscope displays, frivolous geometric shapes. Looks pretty cool. <laughs> the soundtracks for both of these movies are great, very futuristic, uh, atmospheric. Both have far out dreamy montages with pretty trippy visuals. Both are feasts for the eyes, very weird, and very enjoyable. Both of these have also gotten some love from Def Crocodile, one of Vinegar Syndrome's partner labels. You can also find them online. I will post links to both, but uh, they are not the best quality, nor are their English subs, so the physical sets are definitely the best way to go. Check them out, let me know what you think. Again, if you have the means, please consider supporting us and help keep these videos coming out. Patreon.com slash Portraits, send the budget, buy a t-shirt, like and share this video, everything helps. As always, thank you so much for your interest in this channel, and thanks for watching. See you in the future.